is looking at you, kid. Hello, and welcome back to The Hat Historian. In this video, I shall be talking about a hat amongst hats, one deeply ingrained in popular imagination, the legendary fedora. A soft felt hat with a deeply creased crown and wide brim, it is an icon of an era. The fedora is worn by hard-boiled detectives of the silver screen and film noir tough guys, prohibition-era gangsters and the lawmen that chased them, sharp businessmen, smooth crooners, and of course daring adventurers. A symbol of elegant masculinity and a practical shield against the elements, it was worn by men of all walks of life from the 1920s to the 1960s. And while this association with masculinity took an unfortunate turn in the early 21st century, the fedora remains an enduring item of men's fashion. It is a little ironic, then, that it began its existence as a women's hat. The name fedora originates from the popular play Fedora, written in 1883 by French playwright Victorien Sardou. It was written specifically for actress Sarah Bernhardt, who was infamous for wearing masculine clothing in a time when that would certainly have turned heads. Playing the lead role of Princess Fedora Romazov, Fedora being the French pronunciation of Fyodora, a Russian variation of Theodora, she is said to have worn a soft felt hat with a deep crease, creating a slightly rebellious masculine look for her character. While no accounts survive of what that hat might have looked like, it is unlikely to have resembled what we now think of as a fedora. It did, however, strike a chord in many of the female spectators. In a time when the women's rights movement was just starting, many women saw this kind of hat as an empowering item of wear, and it became fashionable amongst women calling for greater freedom. Because of the popularity of the play, soft felt hats became known as fedora-style hats. When the play came to America in October of 1883, it was already a sensation, its popularity in Paris being widely reported upon. In anticipation of its premiere at the 14th Street Theatre in New York on October 1st, Knox Hatter, a famous New York shop, started advertising for a new felt hat, which they said was based on the European Alpine or Tyrolean style, and which they called the fedora. Little resembling the modern fedora, these hats had a tall creased crown and a rolled brim, somewhere more like the Homburg. Indeed, for many years, fedora simply referred to a soft felt hat, kind of like a smaller brimmed slouch hat, in contrast with the stiff top hats bowlers and boaters, which I've already talked about, prevalent in the era. Its popularity ensured that, very quickly, other hatters began advertising fedora-style soft hats, and soon this style could be found all around the United States and Europe. However, for the early part of the 20th century, these hats were still considered rather informal, and the bowler and top hat still reigned supreme for men, with the more traditional, large, highly decorated hats seen as more appropriate for women. Soft hats were seen as something to be worn for recreation, or by farmhands or workmen, or in the case of women, by more provocative fashion forward, or those derided, as always, by the traditionalist as looser moraled ladies, early feminist, and those who wanted to channel a more masculine, powerful look. The fedora remained a fairly unisex hat for most of the beginning of the 20th century. Even after World War I, when softer hats became more popular, it wasn't yet seen as a distinctly masculine item. It did, however, see a great growth in popularity. Young soldiers returning from the trenches wanted a way to create a less uniform look than what they'd experienced in the army, and the stiff bowler hat did not allow for this. They adopted the soft fedora, which would be creased to their preference. Its brim turned however they pleased, and could be worn at a rakish angle as a sign of personal identity. The new suffragettes and early flappers also embraced these soft hats, which began to diverge strongly from their male counterparts as a more practical headwear for the women on the town, often wearing sharply sloped or bell-shaped hats. It truly gained its place in society, and as an essential item of men's wardrobe, in the 1920s, particularly when the ever-fashion-setting Prince Edward, the future King Edward VIII, began wearing them in 1924. By then, they had evolved into roughly the shape we now know, with a tall, creased, pinch-fronted crown and a snapped brim. A practical and stylish hat, it fit this new era of travel and transportation. Soft, able to be folded without damage, 
It was easy to carry in cramped new automobiles and packed into suitcases. With the new popular classes going out more, it did not need to be checked in theaters and dance halls, and its weatherproof construction and wide brim made it a great protection against the elements for working men who could not afford public transportation. Its heyday was during the 1920s and 30s, particularly in America, where it became associated with the Prohibition era. All the style-conscious gangsters could be seen sporting one, and so did the detectives who investigated them, who wanted to mark their authority in a time when a man was expected to wear a hat, without sacrificing practicality as men who often had to ride in cars or run after suspects. Similarly, in Europe, the bowler was relegated to the more conservative fields of banking and law, as we have covered in another video, replaced by the fedora in everyday life. Becoming slightly shorter in the 1930s, to further accommodate the increasingly common automobile, it can be seen in almost every period film, a sign of the fashionable man of the interwar years. Further reinforcing its fashionable image, as much then as now, movie stars strongly influenced popular fashion. It was these movie stars that ensured the fedora's continued popularity, as men wanted to resemble, say, Humphrey Bogart. Many films were made in the late 1930s that were set during Prohibition, and thus the stars continued to wear the fedora, which therefore remained in fashion. This popularity continued throughout the years of the Second World War and shortly after. However, the fedora did not remain static. Its shape became smaller with a narrower brim, such a hat can be seen on the famous crooner Frank Sinatra, who adopted it as his style. However, its decline was inevitable. Much like after the previous World War, young soldiers starting out in life wanted to mug themselves apart from previous generations. A more casual style began to emerge, and going hatless became more acceptable. Cars began to spread to more and more people as the new middle class expanded, and thus workers no longer needed the protection from the rain that hats provided making it in their minds a less useful accessory. By the 1960s, hats in general had mostly vanished, the fedora amongst them. But that does not mean that it has gone completely extinct. Disdain throughout the 1960s and 70s and its hippie and mod countercultural movements, the fedora returned gently in the early 1980s and its nostalgia trends. One famous duo that wore black fedoras as part of their musical acts outfit are the Blues Brothers. And then in the 1980s, a film character came about that firmly made the brown fedora the hat of the adventurer and occasional archaeologist, Indiana Jones. Jones wearing a fedora isn't illogical in and of itself, as the movies are set in the 1930s, a time when the fedora was a normal item of menswear. But directors Lucas and Spielberg wanted to give him a silhouette that could be instantly recognizable. And by giving him a distinctive high-crowned fedora, they succeeded, cementing the hat into the minds of a whole new generation of people. Ever since the 80s, the fedora has been a way for men to mark themselves apart, a handy faction accessory that added a little zest to their look. One famous wearer of the period was Michael Jackson. Several more recent celebrities can often be seen wearing one, both men and women, such as Britney Spears, Johnny Depp, or Bruno Mars. In the 1910s, the fedora type hat was appropriated by a movement of disenfranchised men who turned their bitterness into a disturbing set of social rules that led to the hat being associated with sexism, entitlement, and a condescending sense of intellectual superiority. Often describing themselves as nice guys, their behavior, particularly to women, usually tends to prove otherwise, and their outfits, often consisting of a fedora-type hat and t-shirt, has recently given the hat a bad name, which I find unfortunate. So, if you'll allow me a moment, let me defend this fine hat from the image these people are giving it. Firstly, the hat these men are wearing usually isn't a fedora, but a cheap trilby. A similar hat, but often much smaller brimmed, and with patterning on it, sometime without the top crease. Secondly, while personal style has no firm rules and is up to the wearer, the fedora is traditionally a semi-formal article of clothing to be worn with a suit or blazer, Nazi-punching archaeologists notwithstanding. And if you want to best capture its traditional flair, it is best to combine it with that outfit. I usually wear my own fedoras only when wearing a jacket and tie. Furthermore, as with an ill-fitting sweater, a fedora that is not fitted to the physique of the wearer will look sloppy. That is why despite trying to emulate the dashingly masculine look of the 1930s movie stars and portray themselves as classy, the pickup artist type of fedora wearer often just looks like someone who's somewhat unkempt and weird. I shall end there before my defense of this hat I love becomes a tirade. But the fedora can also be seen in media today in a better light, a 
as a way to show a character that is dashingly retro, or just slightly more style conscious, as with the character Neil Caffrey of White Collar, who once described his hat as his humble assault on conformity. Several retro shows, notably the show Mad Men, have also brought back some of that old formal style in people's minds. And when worn correctly, the fedora can be a great accessory to complement a suit. Not only that, but it still offers the protection from the sun or rain that seems to be lacking in modern business wear. In and out of fashion for half a century, sometimes celebrated, sometimes derided, the fedora is one of the most iconic hats in existence. And thanks to both its practicality and its versatility, not to mention its history, refuses to disappear for good. So I once again hope that you found this all interesting and will join me again soon with another hat. Until then, I tip my hat to you.